Someone sent me a link to a document called Thinking with Flying Logic. Flying Logic is a desktop application for creating logic diagrams. And it, the document essentially unfolds an approach for doing logic diagrams in support of Goldratt's theory of constraints. And it has some really interesting di diagrams in it. So I thought I would figure out, see if I could, how close I could get to doing those diagrams in Kumu. So one of them, which is labeled effects-based planning, this is the diagram from page 33 of that document. And there's a link here to the document itself. So what I did was I created a, a set of, of types that mirrored the definition of the types that were on the diagram. And I defined a set of colors, which are equivalent to the colors that were in the diagram. There are several colors that aren't on this diagram, but they were in the, in the definition for elements that might be used in a effects-based planning diagram. And I have, the way that I ended up with the colors is I have this utility called color picker, which will allow me to, to just go ahead and, and pick a color from from a, a web page so that down here in the lower right hand corner it tells me what these colors are. And I found color picker on, on um, Chrome utilities or what, whatever, Chrome extensions. And it's a, a nice little utility that allows me to readily duplicate colors that I see somewhere else. But but once I define the the types, you know, you can use, as I said, you can use Alt S and you can look at the the entire perspective that's defined for this particular map. And I just changed the element size and put the labels in the center and changed the font size. And I made the, the connections straight and I inherited the color because I just thought it would be nice to see the, the transition in the connection color from source to destination. And then I defined the, the types. So when I created the individual entities, I just went ahead and assigned the appropriate types to them so that the colors came out right. And the, the, to me, it, it seems like the, the diagram is a, is a straightforward creation, um, easily duplicated. I didn't really see the, the need for all these little and bubbles in the center, I sort of assume that if there are two connections together, then it must be an and rather than an or. The other diagram that was presented was a conflict resolution diagram, which I defined in the same way so that this, this perspective is defines a different set of types than the other perspective. So once I defined them and, and set them up as the same colors, then I could readily go ahead and what I figured was an essential duplication of the diagram. And it just, it worked out relatively easily. So I was, I was pleased with the ease with which I could take some other diagram form and actually duplicate them in Kumu. The, the one place that I did run into a difficulty here, which um, I should warn you about, is that that this A ended up being the same as the A on this diagram when I initially created them. So that every time I would go to the other diagram and change the color of it, the color of it would change on this diagram. And finally, I realized that I had I had used the same element on two different diagrams. Back to what I had said before, all of the maps are presentations of a overlaid on a set, a single set of content. So I now have actually two different A's defined in this environment. And um, I just warn you against it or to look out for it if you're doing multiple maps in the same project to be sure that you, if you want things to be different on different maps, use different labels for them. Otherwise, you could end up clobbering yourself along the way. So hope you found this interesting. It's the Flying Logic, Thinking with Flying Logic document is here in the 
Kumu project, and it's also a link in the external resources for this particular lecture. So hope you find this of some use, and I'll see you in another video soon. Bye.